If you want to change your life, change your outcomes, it starts with you changing your consistent morning routine. You have to figure out what the best morning routine looks like for you. And that can come from trying on different people's hats and their schedules, but you have to have something. Everybody has something. Nobody just wakes up and then hopes that amazing things happen. Not people who are successful. A lot of people wake up like that. Most people wake up and hope something happens to them. Hopes they win the lottery. Hopes they get the promotion. Hopes some big customer calls them, right? We're just living in a land of, I hope something big happens to me, but I don't believe it's going to, as opposed to demanding excellence from yourself every day and it begins with your morning routine. So how can you do it? I'm gonna give you a three-step process that I think will help. Step number one is figure out what makes you soar. So I said this is the most important part of my morning routine. What makes you come alive and soar? What makes you feel like the work that you do matters and you have to show up today? So for me, I have to think of a message every day. I think about you guys every day. I wake up, I'm here in my Toronto condo. It's hard to imagine that 300 million people have seen my videos. The number doesn't make any sense. And so it's easy just to wake up up and just continue to live my life, me, my dogs, my wife, and my condo, and just another okay day. I have to remind myself that the work that I do matters. I think of a message and then I share it. And I take out my phone and I post something to Instagram typically. Right? And that sets me up. That reminds me that what I do matters is meaningful. I need to demand excellence for myself. What is it for you? Maybe it's creating a piece of content. Maybe it's making a video. Maybe it's watching a video. Maybe, th maybe this is part of your morning routine, thank you. And it helps you soar, right? Maybe it's doing a good deed. Maybe it's meditation or prayer or walking the dog or playing in the, in the sun, like whatever it is. What makes you come alive? You have felt it before. You have felt it before. You've had moments in your life where you were bold, confident, unstoppable, powerful, where you felt like you could take on the world, right? Where you felt like your crazy ideas were possible. You felt that before. I know you have. The problem is, the problem is it's not consistent. You're not consistently feeling that way. And so you need to reverse engineer yourself before you worry about taking on other people's routines and ideas, which are definitely helpful, reverse engineer yourself to figure out when in your life did you feel the most bold, confident, powerful, alive, and what led to that happening? What led to that happening? And then put that into your morning routine. Demand it from yourself every day. Right? So it could be reading, it could be watching video, all the things I talked about. It doesn't matter. You felt it before. Reverse engineer what that thing was and then put it into your morning routine because if you woke up and you did the thing that made you soar, that made you feel bold, unstoppable, powerful, confident every single day, holy cow, get ready for a massive change in what your life looks like over the next year. Step number two is ask the high performance coach question. So again, I'm going through all of this stuff with Brendan. I'm going through all this and, and my favorite question was the one I read. If I was a high performance coach, this is what you should ask every day. I like this. If I was a high performance coach looking at my life from a high level, I would tell myself to remember that. Because it's so easy, why I love this, is it's so easy to look at other people's lives and say what needs to be fixed, right? <laughs> you can look at your spouse, your friends, your team, your parents, your siblings, you know, your high school mates, whatever. You can look at other people and say, that needs to be fixed. You gotta go off and do this, right? You, you become the high performance coach for other people. And what I love about this is that you're looking at your own life today as a high performance coach, what would you tell yourself? And then they have one at the end of the day, uh, if I was my own high performance coach, I would tell myself this statement about today. So of all the things on here, this is, it's a great format, I like that the best. And so I would challenge you for the next 30 days to ask yourself that simple question. If you were a high performance coach, looking at your life from a high level, you would tell yourself to remember that what? And then step number three would be, which three people can you model their routine? So Brendan, you know, he's got his, and I'm, I'm modeling this for at least 30 days. I've added, you know, John Asaraf, a friend of the channel, been on a couple times, uh, talks about writing down your goals every day and then, and then touching them, right? So I'll write down some goals and then, I, and then I write them every day now and I'm touching them, right? That's what he does, great. Again, you gotta see what's gonna work for you. Maybe I do that for 30 days and stop. Maybe maybe it's what I do for the rest of my life. I don't know, you won't know until you do it consistently enough. So pick three people who you like. Pick three people who you respect, who you look up to, who say, this is the kind of person that I wanna learn from. And then go investigate how they start their day. And then, and then try on some of it, right? You might love The Rock and he works out for four hours a day. You may not be able to do that, but you could work out for an hour a day, right? Because maybe you're doing nothing every day. So it's a good starting point. Like just get to the gym and start working out every day, right? So pick three people who you love, look up to, respect, admire, and then go research 
What are their morning routines and how can you apply one thing from each of them to see if it works for you? Rule number two, act on your ideas. Chasing down your dream is scary. Chances are nobody around you has done anything close to what you want to do and they don't understand you. They think you're crazy. Well, you know what? Here's a news flash. You are crazy. And you need to embrace your crazy ideas right now or you'll regret for the rest of your life that you never took action. So I'm a big believer that you need to trust your crazy ideas, that when an idea comes to you, you have to go off and do it. You have to teach yourself that you are a genius. Therefore, you come up with genius ideas and you need to birth them into existence because it came to you. Therefore, it's good. At least that's what I tell myself. And here's a quick example. I started a new channel last week featuring IG lives of different entrepreneurs. One of the things that frustrated me was that people, your heroes, people that I love, that I look up to, that you look up to, are going live on Instagram every day and the lives disappear in 24 hours. It's just a function of Instagram is after 24 hours, the lives go away. Nobody can see them anymore. And I was frustrated for myself and for you and that all of this great wisdom was being lost. But I was also frustrated for them, for the, for the thought leaders, for the experts, for your heroes, that they're creating this amazing content to help people and then it just goes away. And so I wanted to help protect their legacy, preserve their wisdom, and also have something for you guys to be able to go back to again and again and again, access to thought leaders and experts and heroes. And so I thought, what if I just started a channel with their IG lives? And I came up with the idea on a Friday, and then on Friday, we launched. On Friday, I started with my own live, and we, we had a live of one other person. And I put them up and we launched a channel, set up the email address, set up the banners, set up the channel art, set up the playlist, set up the rules, and then started training my team on how to do it. And so now we've got, I don't know how many videos, a bunch of videos that have been put up since we've launched a channel. And, and that needs to be the speed at which you start to move, that you get ideas and you don't sit on them. How many ideas have you had that you've been sitting on for weeks, for months, for years? When I, when I travel and I meet different entrepreneurs, it, it saddens me so much to see so many people have had a dream for a decade plus and still haven't done anything with it. The biggest problem is you're just not acting on it. And so you have to protect your dream. You have to, you have to find a spot that makes you come alive, makes you believe that you can do it. But protecting your dream doesn't mean doing nothing on your dream, right? You have to act even when the people around you don't understand you, think you're crazy because again, you are nuts. It's amazing and you have to embrace your crazy ideas. Rule number three, have shorter goals. As time has gone on, I've become less and less a fan of goal setting. And I love the idea of quarterly goals over annual goals, over a decade long goals because the timeline is shorter. And why I'm less a fan of goal setting is because the more you're actually growing, the less likely you're actually able to predict where you're going to be. So I really hate 10 year goals, five year goals, 10 year goals. If you think about where you were five years ago, think about who you were five years ago, five years ago. Look, look at the calendar five years ago from today in the past. Who are you? You think that person could predict where you would be 10 years ago? 10 years ago, I just started my YouTube channel. Uh, I had a couple videos up. 10 years ago, I said I'd never want to write a book. 10 years ago, I wouldn't imagine that I'd, I'd be here. I'd be here and, and making videos for a YouTube channel with 300 million views in Puerto Rico because Brendan Burchard invited me to his mastermind group to speak on stage in front of all these successful entrepreneurs. I wouldn't have predicted that, like with, with zero accuracy. And same thing for you. 10 years ago, you had no idea that you'd be here. Not if you're growing. And this is the big caveat. Not if you're growing. Like if you can predict with accuracy where you're going to be in 10 years, you can hit it. But it's just way small compared to what you could have done. And it means that you haven't grown in the past decade. And so that's my main beef against goals. And and. Having shorter goals, having numeric goals can be great. Can be great. Like I want to get 10 million subscribers on my main YouTube channel. That's a good goal. But if I set that as my 10 year goal and that's the only thing I'm going to do, then it's wrong because probably in three years I should jump off and go do something else. Right? I've been fortunate that 
uh, I've been doing YouTube for 10 years and I, I still love it. It's still amazing. But chances are your 10 year plans, you should jump off in year two and go do something else because that thing is actually better for you because you've grown as a person. So at least that's great. The advice that instead of annual goals, set it down to quarterly goals because goals are still helpful. They're so good to kind of track your progress, to know that this video did better than that video, that this customer brought in more money than this customer, that are you doing enough actions to go and get the business that you want? Those are great. But as a macro thing that's leading your decisions, I think the longer you stretch it out, the worse it actually is. Rule number four, serve others. So in terms of making decisions, you wanna do things that will serve other people. Serving others is hardwired into us. They did fMRI scans of the brain, and when you help other people, it hits the same part of your brain as food and sex. More than receiving, more than getting gifts, is helping others, serving others, being of use. You wanna wake up every day and feel like the work you do matters, that you're having an impact. We all wanna go off and ha have an impact. You are built to serve. And so already in your decision making, does it serve somebody else? Does it help other people in some way? If it's yes, you're making progress. In the book, I go through a three-step process, who, why, how. So who, your one word, most important core value. What do you stand for? Who are you? You have one word that is more important than all the others. So belief is my most important core value. And so already the decisions that I make are through the lens of belief. This video is about belief. I hope it's, it's my intention. I may not always execute on it as best as I can, but it's always my intention. And so if you understand what your one word is, then it allows you to make your decision making process a lot cleaner, a lot simpler, a lot easier. Next is your why. Your purpose comes from your pain. Your why comes from your pain. The thing that you want to help and serve other people with, the problem that you want to solve, is the same problem that you went through. The people who you will love serving are the people who are currently struggling with the thing that you struggled with. Your purpose comes from your pain. And so whatever was the most painful moment in your life, the moment where you felt the lowest, the worst, the, the most worthless as a human being, your purpose for the rest of your life is to help other people who currently feel that way. So think about who you used to be, who you were five years ago, whenever you were struggling the most. There's lots of people who currently are like you used to be. You wanna go serve them. And then the how becomes, how did you get through it? How did you get out of that problem? You may not even be fully out of the problem. Whatever you struggled and suffered with, you're not done. You're still growing, you're still learning, you're still improving. You're still climbing that staircase you know, of knowledge and growth. But every time you take a step, up on the staircase, you can reach back and pull somebody else up. One more step, one more step. The more you learn and grow, the more you can pull people up with you. And so however you got out of the hole, even though you're not done, you're better than you used to be. There's lots of people who currently are who you used to be. And so however you got out becomes a recipe to teach other people as well. Rule number five, find what makes you happy. Happiness comes from knowing who you are and then having the courage and confidence to step out onto that ledge step out onto the ledge, the ledge, and go live it and go be you. Because it's hard, because it's tough, because you're gonna get judged, because we're constantly comparing our version of happiness to somebody else. I'm here in Puerto Rico, Brendan Burchard invited me down to speak to his mastermind group. Uh, these people pay 30 to 50,000 a year to be a part of it and I'm honored to be a guest. And the thing that I see consistently from all the people who are here, right? Imagine if you're, if you're dropping 30 to 50K to be here, how much are you making so that you want to come down, right? Everybody's doing the thing that makes them come alive. And that's a secret of entrepreneurship, at least the ones who are successful. That your version of happiness is going to look different than somebody else's. You're a weird duck. That's awesome. Go live it. Brendan came on stage and started talking about his daily routine. Brendan doesn't do anything work related typically until about one o'clock. He wakes up, he walks the beach, he meanders, he plays with his cat, he does all of these things that get him in the right mental framework and his first call is one o'clock. So he said, that, I want you guys to try something. Tomorrow, go out and walk the beach, right? Go out and walk the beach. Try that first thing in the morning. He moved the start time. We're supposed to start at nine, he moved the start time to 10 o'clock because he wanted us to walk the beach just as an experiment to see. And I, I did it. I went out, I walked the beach, and it was good. But it's not the thing that brings me happiness, right? Living in a tropical paradise, it's not my thing. I like concrete. I like the concrete jungle. 
I like being steps away to everything. I like insane high speed internet, you know. The things that make me happy are gonna be different than Brendan Burchard and be different than you. It's just about figuring out what the heck is the thing that makes you happy. And then spending as much time as possible doing that thing. Rule number six, build momentum. If you wanna be thinking two to three years ahead and still have success today, then you need to make sure that you have existing momentum right now. Entrepreneurs, we're dreamers. We love thinking about what we can make two to three years down the line. It's an easy place for us to live. The biggest problem isn't thinking two to three years ahead, it's right now. It's that you're lacking momentum right now in your business. You're a genius. The only thing you're missing is momentum. So me personally, I've actually tried to go and do the opposite of this advice most of the time. Uh, it's so easy to live two to three years out that I want to now focus on mission. What am I trying to accomplish? The big thing that's never going to happen, right? I want to solve the world's biggest problem. I don't think people believe in themselves enough and that's what I wake up every day trying to help solve, but it will never happen. And then what am I doing right now? As opposed to getting lost in what I can do in two to three years, because again, I think it's so easy just to live there and then not bring it back to what am I doing today to build momentum. So I've really tried to teach myself that as soon as I get an idea for something, to start building momentum around it, not to get stuck in planning mode, right? It's easy to get stuck in planning mode. Here's where I want the plan to be in two to three years. You have to do. Jeff Bezos can think about where he wants to be in two to three years because he has an army of people doing work right now, building momentum on what's currently happening. If you're a solo entrepreneur and you're just living in the future and nothing's happening right now, you're never going to build that future. So as soon as you get an idea, at least for me, I've been trying to teach myself, I take immediate action towards it. It could be something really big. It could be something like when I wanted to build a house, I just decided I'm gonna build a house and then a year later I had my house built, right? From finding a dead property that was empty to excavating to building a 5,000 square foot modern home. Within a year I had my home built from just having the concept and the idea, right? Teach yourself that as soon as you get an idea, you don't just sit, you don't just plan, you don't just tinker, you get out into the world and start doing. Rule number seven, alter your environment. I'm a big believer in altering your environment. I don't think that it has to be physical to start. So let me break down a couple ideas for you that I think will help. One, your physical surroundings of where you are right now, what's on your wall, what you watch, the YouTube videos that you consume, hopefully my channel, the books you read, all of that starts the process of changing what gets into your mindset. More important than the physical environment is this. It's what you're putting in the here. And so you can start that from your home. You can start that from wherever you are. And I gain massive new belief in myself from the video, from so my own channel, from consuming the content from guys like Dan and Brendan Richard and Tony Robbins and all these people every day in my head. It, it pulls me up. It makes me think bigger. It makes me feel like there's something more and injects myself with the belief. And so you can do that right now, immediately. Look at your habits, look at your routine, look at the people you talk to, look at the, the podcasts you're listening to and the videos you're watching. And is it part of a daily practice? It needs to be a daily practice that you're putting that into here to help you start playing a bigger game. Rule number eight, find amazing people like me. A key reason why you are not in an amazing place right now is because you do not have amazing people around you. Think about it. How many of the people that you hang out with consistently make you feel amazing, force you to grow, and push you to be a better version of yourself? You can't do this alone. The people around you need to change so you can change. So I recently came back from a mastermind group in Puerto Rico with Brendan Bouchard and a bunch of super successful people. And one of the things that I love the most was how he works with his friends. And there's so many people who say, don't work with friends, don't work with family, but he's built this group of people who love working together. Some have joined his team, some are, are business partners in different ventures where they're genuine friends and they've been friends for, in some cases, over a decade. I love that model. I love working with people that I, that I know, that I'm connected to. I love working with friends. I don't see it as business is one thing and personal is something else. Maybe that's just me. I, I would much rather work with somebody who I get along with than just have a you know business relationship. And that in particular made me think of my friend, Mark Drager. 
And Mark's got a, a marketing company called Phantom Media. We had a, a podcast together called the Something Poop Podcast. If you want to go check it out. And I've known Mark for over a decade. And he sent me a message not too long ago saying that what I need in a marketing partner for my business isn't what he can provide yet that he's still a little bit away, whether it's a year or two years or whatever it is, away from being able to help me with what I need, both from a experience point of view, a resource point of view, a, a you know, team point of view, that he wasn't ready to help me and that he felt like he was holding me back. That if I had somebody else, then I would grow faster. And it never sat right with me until I went to Brendan's event and then what came back was realizing I want to grow with Mark. I want to grow with my friends. I don't want to just be at the top and then have a bunch of business associates around me and then my friends are like way down here, right? I want to, I want to build it together. There's value for me in building it together beyond just a business ROI and I think ultimately long term it actually leads to a better business ROI. And I love that. I love that Brendan does it and it provided a model for what is possible for me to be able to go off and create and build. And so whether it's Mark, whether it's Alex from Toronto Dance Salsa, whether it's Jeremy from the YouTube uh, coaching business that, that uh, we started together, I like being able to work with people who I can call friends and I want to be able to do that more. And so whether you come on board and you, you, you bring on your friends or family, uh, definitely being around people who push you, who make you feel energized, who build you up, who you could see for the next 20 years being people that you want to hang with, I think is really, 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 really important. Rule number nine, train the right skills. You are spending way too much time on things that you hate doing that you never want to be great at and it's hurting your business. I'm here in Puerto Rico. I'm speaking at an event with Brendan Burchard, his mastermind group. And one of the things I've learned from people who've accomplished a lot, have had big success, is that you are great at something, right? You're, you're the Michael Jordan of something. You have genius level talent at something. But you're not spending enough time doing it. You're spending too much time on the things that you hate, that you don't ever want to be great at, that you can respect and say, hey, this is important for my business, but it doesn't mean that you should be the one doing it. So I spoke at this event and I'm talking to entrepreneurs and, and they're thought leaders and they want to have their YouTube channel. They want to build up their presence and brand name and recognition. And there's so many people who, when they get started, they spend 20 minutes recording a video and then four hours editing it to put the right graphics on, to put the right intro and extra and music. Now, if you are in the graphics business, if you are an editor, then your stuff has to look amazing. But if you're not, then you're training the wrong skill. This is the thing. You're training the wrong skill. There's things in your business that you're spending so much time on that you never want to get great at. You're training the wrong skill. You should not be doing it. Discount it. It doesn't mean you get rid of it completely. It doesn't mean that you disrespect it completely. But if you're spending 20 minutes recording a video and four hours editing it, you're training the wrong skill. You need to switch it. You need to spend four hours recording it. Four hours recording it and 20 minutes editing it. Or zero minutes editing it. I don't care. Because people who are watching your videos, if you're a thought leader, they're coming for this. They're coming for what's in your head. They're not coming for how great your editing skills are. Now, that doesn't mean you disrespect the editing. It doesn't mean you never hire an editor. It doesn't mean you learn zero. But the thing that will get you to be able to afford to hire an editor is making awesome content that comes from here because no amount of editing is going to save it if your ideas suck. It's the thing that holds so many entrepreneurs back from making videos. If you don't want to make videos, if you don't want to be on YouTube, awesome, but there's something in your own business that you're taking that same equivalent to. So look at your calendar, look at where you're spending your time, look at how much time is actually being spent on things that are moving the business forward that you love, that you could be the greatest in the world potentially at. Chances are that number is like 5%. And you need to move it, you need, that needs to be 85%. That's when you start creating magic. And it's not gonna be perfect, Releasing that video won't be perfect. 
you're going to look at it and say, man, that really sucks. I, I would love to have better lighting. I would love to have better sound. I would love to have better editing. I would love to have better gear. Great. Work towards it. But that can't be the reason why you don't post. And it can't be the reason why you're spending all this time doing work that you hate. You can only do so much by yourself. I love being an army of one, right? When, when you get an idea, you have to do something about it. You will it into existence. And if people don't want to help you, then you will it into existence being an army of one. But there's a lot of different ways to win. And you're going to win the hardest on the thing that you're the best at. And so you start. And so you start. And so you start. But you can't do everything. Not very well. So you pick the thing. This is the... This is the most important thing that will help give you leverage in your business, to help you turn from just kind of making a little bit of money, kind of making a little bit of momentum, to having massive momentum, to making way more. Leverage. Figure out the thing that when you do is fantastic and everything else almost doesn't matter. And rule number 10, the last one before our very special bonus clip, be proud of your effort. The greatest thing that you can do for yourself is be proud of your daily effort. It's not about how many likes or views or praise you get. That stuff doesn't actually matter. It'll hit you and make you feel great for a second and then it fades. The only thing that matters is when you're all alone looking at yourself back in the mirror. Are you proud of the person that you are looking at? And for too many people, it's no. And I want to change that in this video. So I recently came back from Brendan Burchard's mastermind in Puerto Rico with some super high level people, uh, about 25 of us sat around a table and masterminded for three days. And a lot of people I've profiled here on this channel. And I normally hate these kinds of events that are open, that are loose, that require just networking and talking to people, right? If there's a structure or if you need help, I love it. If it's, and just spend the next hour and a half mingling and talking to people. I hate it. I, even the thought of it right now is making me cringe. I hate it so much. But when I got there, Brendan challenged me to say, make sure you ask for help. Make sure you don't just give, 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 but that you, you leave here asking for help. And so that's always been a challenge for me. Networking events plus asking for help. We're hitting like both things that I'm historically have sucked at and I struggle with. And so I decided I'm going to be proud of my effort today. I'm going to go off and do it. I'm, I'm not going to go home. I'm not going to go back to my hotel room, right? The hotel room was super close on that two hour break, 90 minute break, three hour break. I could have gone back to my hotel room and done some work. I had lots of logical reasons why I should go back and do work. Everything is behind because I'm not working. But really it'd be an excuse because I'm afraid, because I'm afraid of staying there, because I'm afraid of not being in instruction environment, because I'm afraid of just talking to people, because I'm afraid to ask for help. And so I decided I'm gonna play full out. I'm gonna play full out. I'm gonna maximize this time I've got here. I'm, I'm taking this time off of work because I need to develop the relationships. I need to get the help that I need to get. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask for it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be proud of my effort. Even if I fail, even if I suck, even if it doesn't work out, I'm gonna be proud of my effort. And it wasn't the most uh, amazing result, right? It was awkward. I was standing around and trying to join people's conversations. It was super awkward and cringeworthy, but I was proud that I did it. I was proud that I tried. I can look at myself in the mirror and said, I did that. I tried my best. Pat on the back, I'm amazing. For other people who are there too, they're naturally extrovert. They don't understand what it is to be introvert, to be shy, to joining on conversations to not ask for help and how hard that can be. Uh, so for them, it was easy to just start conversations and introduce themselves. For me, it was really difficult. But self-worth, self-love, self-pride comes from doing difficult things that you don't think you're capable of. And so I was really proud of my effort for doing it. And if, if you did the same thing, it's something I still try to do every day to be proud of my effort. In making this video, I wanna be proud of my effort that I tried my best to make the best possible video yet. You may not achieve it, it may not happen, but if every day you woke up and you try to do the thing to make yourself proud, right, the effort, you're gonna create amazing, 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 amazing things. Where if you stay constrained by just what you know and what you're capable of and what you're good at, you never grow. You just stay inside your comfort zone forever and ultimately end up hating your life.
Now I have a very special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I want to know what your single biggest takeaway from this video. And what are you gonna do this week to take action on it? So let me know in the comment below so we're gonna celebrate with you. Working on your weaknesses is great advice in basketball, but sucks for entrepreneurship because there's no such thing as a complete player in entrepreneurship. There's too many things to learn. This is the difference between the finite game and the infinite game. If you're familiar with Simon Sinek's work, the finite game is when you're playing a game where there are certain rules. Basketball has certain rules, right? Basketball, Kobe's on the floor for a certain amount of time in every game. You can't just have somebody come in and come out. If you bring somebody in, Kobe's gotta come out. You can only have five players on your team at a time. There's a certain number of minutes in a quarter, right? There's rules. For entrepreneurship, for life, there aren't as many rules. You get to play forever. In entrepreneurship, if you are the world's greatest jump shot shooter, right, take that equivalent, you're, you're a billionaire. You don't have to go learn the other things. And it's in your best interest not to. For you to be great at one thing, but then also go learn websites and also go learn coding and also go learn copywriting and also go learn speaking and also go learn video editing and also go, there's too many things. And you'll at best become average at all those things. So you're a complete average person. Entrepreneurship is the opposite. What you want to do is find a thing that you could be the Kobe Bryant of. You are the best in the world at something. You're the best in the world at something. Something in demand. Something in need. Something where you can help people. And then go all in on that. So it's got to be that combination of what you love doing with what there is demand for. If you want to watch another top 10 rules of Evan Carmichael, check out the video next to me. I think you're gonna enjoy. I will see you there, guys. Continue to believe. Bye.